Hi guys, it's uh, Terry from Codam Construction here again, and I want to do a little follow-up video on the Porter Cable uh, 59380 and the 59381 hinge jig, and more in particular about the point about flipping the jig. Uh, when I did the video, I showed you how you had to do the door, and then you had to flip the jig around and do the jam. Now, <clears throat> when I was doing the editing to the other video, I read through and you don't actually have to technically flip the jig. And I guess it's after 15 years of using this thing that I finally figured, remembered why I flipped the jig <clears throat> on 3 8 doors. What happens is that the, the, the part of the edge of the door that's left after you routed it, if you don't flip the jig, it actually gets very, very thin. And I don't know if that's because there's something wrong with my jig. I don't think there's anything wrong with my jig. Or if it's because the inch and three eighths doors are a little bit narrower than actually an inch and three eighths. Maybe there's something different. I don't know. But I remember doing this, not flipping the jig, and routering it as it, as it explains, uh, I believe in the instructions that it came with. But it, it, it sort of left a bit of a problem. So, Maybe with the inch and three quarters doors, you won't you won't be left with such a, a, a razor thin amount at the edge of the door. So technically, you don't have to flip the jig. It's just one of those best practices. I flip the jig, but because for some reason of what it leaves on the edge of the door. So the other thing that I wanted to clear up that I left in the comments too, or I'm sorry, in the descriptions was the the five eighths uh, radius hinge set up with the inch and a quarter bit as well as the template guide it does not come with the kit you have to buy that extra and once again i put uh in the description of the first video you can only get those at amazon.com uh, the other thing is too is this jig can be used to be doing retrofit doors i personally have no experience doing that because i've never had a job that called for me to do that uh, however it can be done to do that and when you do that now you really can't flip the jig because you'll set the the jig up you'll you'll move these beds up and down to align with whatever is existing on the door and then you really will have to not flip the jig and router it and take your chances as that that edge of your new door uh, won't be too thin in, in the end. So the other thing in the first video that I talked about too was these two pairs of pins that are on the bed of this thing. And in particular, I talked about removing the pin that was closest to the rail. If you're gonna get into the practice of not flipping the jig, which you can, I would suggest not even messing with those pins and removing them. Because like I said, when you remove that pin, there's a black tab that's inside it that holds the, the pin relatively stiff uh, to make the, it easier to use the thing. I don't know how you get that back in. So my apologies for that piece of advice. Uh, I hope you can understand. I forgot to thank you all for watching the first video. Thank you for watching the first video. Thank you for watching the second video. And most importantly, I would love to hear comments of other people that have this setup or any other kind of setup as to what they're doing. Uh, I found that I can do a door uh, router of the door and the jam in under 15 minutes a door. That doesn't include assembly and all the other things that go along with it. Uh, it I found that it, it does work very quickly for me. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, we hope to hear from you all soon.